Now, for this uh, third race on the card, with it being a deaf blind race day, raising awareness, Malcolm Tomlinson's commentary is going to be accompanied with uh, sign language here on, on course, uh, provided by Tula, who we're hoping to speak to uh, a little bit later on. Uh, so something a, a little bit different, raising awareness, and we will join Malcolm now as the flag is raised for race three. Thanks, David. Set to go here. Just been encouraged to walk forward. They've got about 100 yards to go before they reach the starter, but they'll probably get uh, sent on their way before they do. The runner's being called forward towards the starting tape, and they're off. Racing for the Deaf Blind UK supports people with deaf blindness handicap steeplechase, heading towards the first of 14 fences. And Thomas Todd is the first to begin in the black and pink jacket. Landed by about three parts of a length over fence number one to racing in second position due reward. They're followed through by Dindin and Penn Creek has settled towards the back of the field as they head down towards an open ditch. This is fence number two. Thomas Todd jumped nicely, landed by about three parts of a length. Racing a little bit deeper is due reward, followed through by Penn Creek and Dindin, quickly at fence number three, all safely negotiating that one. And off they go to fence four, which is the second of the open ditches. Fence number four, looming large for Thomas Todd, who sees a stride and jumps well, getting away by just over a length to due reward, racing in the noseband, jockey with the white cap, racing second. They're followed through on the inside by Dindin in a red jacket and deeper out the pale blue of Penn Creek at the end of the back stretch, swinging right-handed to make their way back towards the home straight. There are three fences in the home straight, and then they'll race away on their final circuit. So next up will be fence number five, and the runners are making their way off the bend down towards the fifth fence now. Thomas Todd in front for Patrick Cowley by just over a length to due reward, racing in second for Paul O'Brien at the fifth, all safely negotiating that one. And on they go to the middle fence in the home straight, fence number six, upcoming, Thomas Todd jumps well again. Penn Creek jumped nicely between horses, taking slightly closer order in second position now as they go to the fence, which will be the last next time. And Thomas Todd just dived at that one a little bit, but got away with it and races in front as they head up to the winning post. They have a circuit left to travel. Thomas Todd's jockey just having a peep over his shoulder and he'll see a wave of three horses behind him on the inside rail, due reward between horses, Penn Creek and three deep of those, Dindin. So they're on the turn, racing away from the enclosures towards the far side of the track. Once again, they're about to run past their point of departure and they'll turn right into the back stretch to face four more fences shortly. Three more in the home straight. Seven left to take in total. Here's fence number eight looming large now for Thomas Todd, who's yet to surrender the lead, but Penn Creek landed within a half length of the leader. Behind those, due reward continues to travel well on the inside, and Din Din still at the back of the forerunner field. Another open ditch comes up next. It's fence number nine at it now. Thomas Todd jumps well, but so does Penn Creek, who's traveling on a tight rein for jockey Dylan White, uh, Whelan. Behind that one, Din Din, just stoked along for a stride or two. Due reward behind that one. They've just negotiated fence number 10. One more fence in the back stretch. This is four fences from home. It's the last ditch. It's fence number 11. And Thomas Todd, still the first to rise, landed by a neck to Penn Creek, who's traveling really well in second. Reminders for Dindin behind them. Due reward on the inside, just gets a bit of a squeeze as they leave the back stretch behind them, turning right-handed back towards the home straight. Three fences left to negotiate in the Deaf Blind UK, supports people with deaf blindness, handicap steeplechase. Thomas Todd has company. Penn Creek has ranged up sides and has now gone to a narrow lead. Penn Creek goes on by a neck to Thomas Todd racing second. Right behind them, Din Din trying to pick up. So too is due reward as they head down to fence number 12. 
Three fences from home, Penn Creek takes it on at the third last. Penn Creek jumps well, gets away by two lengths to Thomas Todd, who's trying to battle back in second. Due reward kept going, so too Dindin at the second last. Penn Creek landed by four or five, and he's going further clear. The jockey just starts to encourage him along as they go towards the final fence. Penn Creek at the last, jumps well again, gets away by seven or eight. Due reward has taken second from Thomas Todd and then Din Din on the run inside the final half. Penn Creek just having to be kept up to his work is being driven out, but Penn Creek will go on to land the spoils. Due reward in second, Din Din for third, Thomas Todd in fourth. So Penn Creek has completed his hat trick. First two victories were with Luca Morgan in the saddle. The third leg uh, when partnered by Dylan Whelan today. Dylan's first win in the UK. Uh, well done. How did the race go for you? Yeah, good. Travelled well, jumped well enough and uh, yeah, very happy with the way the race went and done it easy enough, I believe. Was there quite a bit of, I suppose there's a little bit of pressure, isn't it? Because you're on a horse who's who's expected to win. Well, yeah, it's, well, sure he's expected to win. There was no big deal if he didn't, you know. Uh, ben just said, relax and ride your own race and don't be thinking too much about it. So yeah, I'm just very grateful for Ben and the owners to give me the opportunity. And were you a, a little concerned maybe down the back with, because Thomas Todd was, was jumping left, wasn't he? On yeah, your... I tried to take back, but my lad was just travelling too well. So uh, I kind of just had to sit and suffer, but... Um, I tried to just get a half length up even because he was travelling so well and keep him in. So, but uh, yeah, it worked out in the end. And three out, that was the time to go. Yeah, look, I was trying to hold on to him for as long as I can, but there was nothing coming with me. So I, I just kicked on. I heard him all sapping and banging behind me. So I just went on to do, ride my own race. How long have you been working for, for Ben Pauling, which is a, a big operation now? Yeah, a big operation and a great bunch of staff and a great team of horses behind him. And I'm very lucky to be there. Um, I'm there about a month and a half now and I'm very grateful for what he's given me. And you, was your winner for, was it for Declan Queeley yeah, in Declan Ireland? Declan Queeley back in Ireland, yeah. Uh, Declan was very good to me as a young lad. He got me going as a conditional, gave me 40 something rides and I was just touched off in a horse in Galway firm and gave me, I broke my leg in Roscommon and gave me a winner for my first ride back. So, oh, wow. Yeah, I was very grateful for him as well. So you'll be hoping to you must be in there schooling quite a lot there's lots of lots of good jockeys there yeah yeah look plenty of people there and a lot of keelan woods in bends and he's a great help to me luke is a great help to me and everyone else that comes in around there they're all good help to me uh, well i hope to see more of you dylan thanks for coming out and um yeah well done on the the win on penn creek yeah, thanks very much now as i've mentioned a few times today this is a deaf blind uh, charity awareness race day here at Market Race. And if you were watching our third race, won by Penn Creek, uh, Malcolm Tomlinson's commentary was uh, accompanied by our interpreter, uh, providing a sign for the, the viewers who may be hard of, hard of hearing. And this is uh, Tula Scott Smith. And Tula, this is um, quite an exciting challenge for you today. It is, absolutely. It's uh, very nice to see it being so inclusive. And it is very inclusive, and that's what, what today is all about. There's a sensory area as well. and. Um, you know, it's, it's got a lovely vibe to it, the day, hasn't it? It has, absolutely. It's so good it's now inclusive and just bringing everybody together and making it so it's accessible for everybody. And is this the sort of thing you've done before, like tr accompanying a, a live commentary? I would imagine that must be quite difficult. Well, it's certainly the first one I've done in a long time due to COVID, but doing the horse racing, it's my first time. So I, my knowledge has increased with doing this. I, I bet it has. So is it your first time coming horse racing at all? No, I've been before. I used okay. to come occasionally, but it's my first time working at the horse races. And I, I'm incorrectly, and I think I'm the only one who's, who's referred to you as a, a signer throughout the day. Of course, you're an interpreter. Um, how long have you been an interpreter? I've been qualified now seven years. So but I've been interpreting and signing for since about 2008. But yeah, it is an interpreter role, qualified interpreter. And we've seen you once today already. We're going to see you in the the, the fifth race as well I and mean, how much demand is there for for this this type of thing from all sorts of, of areas well it's just given access so people can actually be part of it i mean previously if there's no no provision for it then it's a problem for deaf people to being able to access it but whereas now it's being made accessible that's going to pull, pull more of the deaf community in hopefully and for some you know for someone who doesn't know any i, I won't ask you to to demonstrate anything in particular but how easy would it be even to like to learn like block alphabet or something like like that for for someone who doesn't know any sign language 
it's all there online, everything's on the computer now, so if you want to learn the basic alphabet, it's all there so you can access it on the, on the internet. Okay. And did you enjoy doing the third race today? I loved it. I loved it, yes. It was very exciting and I hope that came across in my interpreting of it. I really did because there were no, I didn't spot any, I was watching you throughout and there were no real pauses and, and Malcolm, he gets plenty of words in. <laughs> he does, he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's been good to interpret for and he did say he was slowing it down slightly for me. But, um, it didn't sound like that yeah, to me, I, I think he yeah. was in full, full flow. <laughs> I don't think the horses are slowing down no. for me. <laughs> what? Tula, it's really good to, to meet you and thank you very much for coming and, and having a chat. We'll look forward to, to seeing you in, in action again, race five. Yep, I'm looking forward to getting back out there, so Brilliant. thank you. Thanks, Tula. Thank you.